Welcome to part four in my Be Concise series. If you haven't watched parts one, two, and three, don't worry, you can still watch today's lesson. I'll link these videos down below for you. What's going to happen in today's lesson? Well, I have 20 verbs for you, five gap fills you can use to practice the vocabulary, and 20 discussion questions you can once again use to review today's lesson. At the end of this lesson, can you please let me know how you did on the gap fills? Did you get 20 correct out of 20? Or maybe mm, 14 correct out of 20? Let me know. I love hearing from you. Well, my name is Arnell. Let's start with number one. Number one, I put a vitamin C tablet into a glass of water and it slowly became part of the water. We can make this more concise. It dissolved, dissolve, dissolve. In this lesson, you can see I put circles above the word stress. So we say dissolve, dissolve, not dissolve. And the first sentence is perfectly correct, but this lesson is about being more concise and you can use some advanced vocabulary. When something dissolves in water or another liquid, it slowly breaks down and becomes part of that liquid. You can't see it anymore. We're normally thinking about powders or medicine. Add one teaspoon of milk powder to one cup of water and stir it so it dissolves. This pill was designed to dissolve slowly in the stomach to release the medication over a few hours. Number two, let's look at this apple. Mmm. The apple is getting older. We cannot eat it anymore. The apple is rotting. Rot. Rot. When something rots, we're thinking about a natural thing like fruits or vegetables, meat, meat can rot, wood, your teeth, too much sugar can rot your teeth. And many of you may be more familiar with the adjective rotten. Have you ever smelled rotten eggs? They smell like death. Three, let's go back to this apple. You can see it's clearly rotten, but let's keep watching. Hmm. The apple is slowly becoming part of the earth again. The apple is decomposing. Decompose. Decompose. When something decomposes, it slowly rots and breaks down and becomes part of the earth again. Again, we're thinking about natural things. Plants, animals, the human body can decompose. But sometimes you might see or hear about plastic decomposing. It can take hundreds of years for a single plastic bottle to decompose. Number four. Sometimes I think Nikki can't see or feel the difference between fantasy and reality. She thinks life is like a movie. She can't differentiate between fantasy and reality. Differentiate. Differentiate. When we differentiate between two or more things, we can see the difference. We can feel the difference. 
it's important to differentiate between there, there, and there when you're writing in English. So we can differentiate between A and B, or we can differentiate something from something. That also works. Can you easily differentiate one English accent from another? Four verbs done. Let's do our very first gap fill. This is a mini conversation between an uncle and his six-year-old niece. Put the verbs in the box into the spaces. You don't need to change the verbs. They are already in their correct forms. Pause the video to do this. Now listen and check. What's that? What's what? That box looking thing. That's our compost bin. That's where we throw out all the food we don't eat. I mean, not all our food, but things like vegetable peels, fruit, and even garden waste can go in there. Gross! Everything is rotting inside. Of course it is. A lot of this food has been in here for months. I hope you don't eat this stuff. <laughs> no. We put food waste in here to decompose. After a few months, it becomes compost for our garden. It's full of nutrients that plants love. What if you accidentally eat the food in here? Or Max, your dog. What if he accidentally eats the food in here? Don't worry. Max and I can easily differentiate between this food and fresh food. I hate vegetables. I only like candy. Candy doesn't decompose, right? No, but the sugar dissolves in your mouth, which rots your teeth. You shouldn't eat too much of it. How did you do on the first gap fill? Don't forget to leave your score in the comments at the end of this lesson. Number five. I bought my grandpa a watch. I cut his name into the metal. I engraved his name. Engrave. Engrave. Normally we engrave on a piece of jewelry, like a watch, um, a necklace or a bracelet, but we can also engrave on wood or stone. Lindsay had her favorite quote engraved on her bracelet. The family chose to engrave a heartfelt message on the headstone. Number six, let's start with a little story. Jacob and Meredith met online and they've been chatting together for months. Jacob wants to visit Meredith for the first time and asks her to send him $500 for a plane ticket. She sends him the money and never hears from him again. Jacob is a dishonest person who stole money from Meredith. Jacob scammed Meredith. Scam. Scam. When someone scams you, you think you are buying a product. You think you're buying a service. You think you're buying an opportunity, but they're all fake. You lose your money. The telemarketer tried to scam elderly people by pretending to be from a charity organization. Unfortunately, a lot of elderly people do get scammed. I was scammed out of out of $500 because I thought I was buying a new iPhone. Oh, so stupid. I lost my money. So scam is a common verb, but scam is also the noun. Be careful of online scams. Have you ever been scammed? Seven. Oops, I accidentally thought Gracie was her twin sister. I mistook Gracie for her twin sister. Mistake. Mistake. Notice how this verb is irregular. Mistake. Mistook. Mistaken. Before we move on, I want to look at the noun for just a second. The noun is more common, 
For example, on this test here, you can say, hmm, he made three mistakes. But we wouldn't use a verb in this case. We wouldn't say, ooh, he mistook three times. So how do we use the verb? Well, when we use the verb, we think something is this, but it's actually that. There's a bit of confusion. Like in my first example, oops, I mistook Gracie for her twin sister. It's easy to mistake Ben's kindness for weakness, but he's actually a very competitive person. Hi, Sarah. Oh, I'm so sorry, I mistook you for someone else. Have you ever done that? I thought she was someone else, but she wasn't. Eight, I enjoy looking through stores even when I don't need to buy anything. It's fun and relaxing. I enjoy browsing. Browse, browse. When you browse through a store or online, you're just looking. You don't really need to buy anything. Excuse me, can I help you? No, thank you. I'm just browsing. Our train doesn't leave for 45 minutes. We can browse through the bookstore for a while if you want. Okay, let's do gap fill number two. Pause the video to do this gap fill. Now listen and check. Hi, I'd like to engrave a message on this watch, please. Sure. What would you like it to say? I'm not really sure. It needs to be a special message. Well, uh, most people just keep engravings really simple. It can say something like, To Dan, with all my heart, love Jane. Oh, no, no, no. This watch is for a male friend of mine who helped me with a really difficult problem. I don't want him to mistake this gift for anything other than a thank you. I see. Can I take a look at the watch, please? Its size can help us decide how long the message can be. Uh, Ma'am, where did you buy this watch, if you don't mind my asking? Not at all. I was just browsing online and someone was selling this watch. My friend loves watches, so I thought I couldn't go wrong with a Rolex. I know it's used, but it's in perfect condition. I'm very sorry, ma'am. Uh, this isn't a real Rolex. What do you mean it's not a real Rolex? I've been working with watches for over 15 years, and this is a definite fake. I'm afraid you've been scammed. Number nine. One of my colleagues always talks to me like I'm stupid. The other day, she actually said to me, Good job on the report. I love how hard you work on such simple things. You should be really proud of yourself. Ooh, she always patronizes me. Patronize. Patronize. When someone patronizes someone, they speak to this person as if they're stupid or inferior, but it doesn't have to be in an aggressive way. A lot of times you can patronize someone with a smile on your face. Oh, what's that you're reading? Dante's Inferno. Oh, I've never read that. It's not for everyone. You wouldn't like it. It's really complex. You can see B is patronizing A. 10. Many locals. And locals are people who are from that area. They live in that neighborhood. They live in that city. Many locals regularly go to Mama's Bakery because they like supporting that business. Many locals patronize Mama's Bakery. Patronize? What? Patronize was number nine. That means when you talk to someone like they're stupid. Patronize has two definitions. Same spelling, same pronunciation. So you really have to look at that context. When someone patronizes a business like a restaurant, a coffee shop, 
or a store, they regularly go there to spend their money. They support that business by being a customer. Even though the coffee at Beanbury Press is more expensive, I choose to patronize it because it's a small, independent business. Going for a walk in the woods helps me clear my head and feel less stressed. Helps me unwind, unwind, unwind. And it's important to remember that it's unwind, not unwind. Wine. Wine helps me unwind. Wine helps me unwind. You can hear it's the same I sound. We use this verb at the end of the day, at the end of the week, or after something stressful. When you unwind, you do something that helps you feel whew, less stressed. Listening to soothing music can help you unwind and forget about your worries for a while. Number 12. Tomato plants grow really well in sunny climates. Tomato plants thrive. 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 When a person, a plant or an animal, the economy thrives. It does very well. There's positive energy to it. My son is thriving at university. He's getting good scores on his exams. He has an active social life. He loves where he lives. He's thriving. The startup company started to thrive after securing a significant investment. They made over a million dollars in six months. Wow. This conversation is between two colleagues. One of the colleagues has just finished interviewing someone. Pause the video to do the gap fill. Now listen and check. How was the interview? Awful. You wouldn't believe some of the answers she gave me. Like what? The interview started with me explaining our software and how to use it. And after a few minutes, she asked me why I was interviewing her when I was just a junior executive. You're kidding. Patronizing the interviewer doesn't make a good first impression. I was a little embarrassed by her question. I think I even turned red. Forget about her. I know you're thriving in your department. You won't be a junior for long. Thanks. I don't mind being a junior executive. I was just surprised by her question. How many more candidates do you need to interview? I have two more this afternoon and one tomorrow morning. I can't wait to get these over with. Did you have lunch yet? I was thinking about trying that new food van down the road. Their falafels look really good. Care to join me? Unfortunately, I brought my own lunch, just a sandwich and some chips. Come on, hot food will be much better for you. And we can help patronize a small business. Let's pick up the food and sit in the park. You're right. A few hours out of the office might help me unwind a bit. Imagine I'm a carpenter and I'm building a table. My client has a couple of requests. I need to make the table longer. I also need to make the table wider. I need to make the table higher. And I need to make the chairs shorter. Make longer, lengthen, lengthen, lengthen the table. Make wider, widen, widen, widen the table. Make higher, heighten, heighten, heighten the table. Make shorter, shorten. Shorten, shorten the chairs. You can see we've done 13, 14, 15, 16, all together. I need to lengthen these curtains because they're too small for the window. 
We can use these verbs for physical things, but not always. The word refrigerator is often shortened to fridge. Reading books regularly can help you widen your vocabulary. Here we have two TEFL teachers discussing a listening activity. Pause the video to do this. Now listen and check. This listening activity is really long. Look, one conversation lasts eight minutes. Eight minutes? Wow, that does seem a bit long. Is there any way you can shorten the activity? Well, I was thinking about playing half of the recording today and the other half tomorrow. We could spend each lesson focusing on just one part. Is that activity from a course book? No, it's a book specifically for listening called Widen Your Vocabulary. It came out this year. I'm slowly trying to lengthen the time my students can concentrate on one recording. That sounds like a really good plan. I know many students can only focus for one to two minutes max. <sighs> oh, what's wrong? Sorry, uh, my neck's been killing me lately. I don't know what it is. Hmm. Do you think it's the position of your monitor? It's way too low. I can see that you are looking down at your screen. Is there any way you can heighten it? I didn't even think about that. I'll give it a try. 17. The judge told Michelle that she must agree to his orders and do what he says. She must comply. 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 When we comply, we agree to do what someone says. We agree to do what a judge or lawyer says. The police, a doctor, the government, something formal and official. So we wouldn't say, my mom told me to clean my room and I complied. Mm, that's a bit unnatural. International businesses need to comply with the laws and customs of the countries they operate in. Visitors to the museum are expected to comply with the no flash photography policy to preserve the artwork. You can see we can say comply or comply with something. In order to protect the man's identity, his face was made less clear. His face was blurred. Blur. Blur. When we blur something, we make it less clear. In today's lesson, you can see I blur parts of the sentences. In today's digital age, social media can often blur the lines between real life friendships and online connections. Blur the lines is actually an idiom. It means the difference between two things is not so clear. The lines are blurred. Bad words in a TV series are often covered with a beep sound. I feel better. Bad words are often censored. Censor. Censor. When something is censored, it is covered or hidden because it's inappropriate. We can censor bad language with a beep sound. We can censor images by blurring them or pixelating them. Do you want to know what my favorite type of censoring is? This one. I love this one. I love it when the news or documentaries use this one. You're confused right now. You don't know it's me. But it is. The author was asked to censor certain passages in her novel to comply with publishing guidelines. The controversial scene was censored from the TV show before it aired to avoid backlash. 20. Last one. 
I started a project which I knew was difficult and would take a long time. I undertook a project. Undertake. Undertake. Notice how this verb is irregular. Undertake. Undertook. Undertaken. When you undertake something, it's something big and challenging. Normally, it takes a long time. The city council plans to undertake a major infrastructure development project in the city. Infrastructure. We're talking about roads, buildings, bridges, things like that. As a private investigator, Frank is often asked to undertake complex cases. Thank you for undertaking my Be Concise series. Let's do a final cat fill. Look at this conversation between two teachers. And before you begin, PG 13 here stands for Parental Guidance 13. This means a child has to be at least 13 to watch the movie. Okay. Pause the video to do this. Now listen and check. I've just screened the movie Red Zone Twilight and it's unfortunate that a lot of bad language isn't censored. Isn't that a movie about the American Civil War? Yes, it ties in with the chapter I'm teaching my students. I think the movie will really help bring what we are learning to life. Parts of the movie are pretty violent, but thankfully you don't see much blood. I mean, there are some dead bodies, but they're in the background, so they are a bit blurred. What's his rating? It's PG-13, so my students are technically old enough to watch it, but I'm not sure how some parents will feel about it. If it's PG-13 and it complies with the school's movie policy, you have nothing to worry about. I might inform the parent in advance and send the letter home with my students, just in case. You know what else I'll do? I'll write a brief summary of the plot and my reasons for showing the movie. I don't think that's necessary. Do you really want to undertake such a huge task just to show a movie? All you need to do is message the parents that Red Zone Twilight is a PG-13 movie. If they have any concerns, they can message you directly. Part 4. Done. Don't forget to check out the first three videos in this series. So far, that's 80 verbs. That's a lot. How are you feeling? As promised, I have 20 discussion questions you can use to practice the verbs. I'll of course make these bigger in a moment. Leave me your score down below and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye!